All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. And once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai Bar Shem Rakakwadash. All praises and glories definitely do. Especially in the times we're in, where we're about to see Esau make this MOTB, which is an acronym for you know what of the beast. He's about to make this thing mandatory, as in everyone is to take it, is to receive it. Now, those that don't take it are clearly showing that they're not with the New World Order because that MOTB is, or rather is a staple of the New World Order. Okay, it's important that you understand out there that we're about to enter into something we really have been since 1933. America entered into the New World Order when FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, came on the scene. He introduced something to America called the New Deal. Now, the New Deal was a, a tongue-in-cheek way of saying the New World Order. Now, the New World Order is, is not a is not a new concept. It's really an old concept. It goes back to May 1st, 1776, when Adam, Adam Wieshop, some say Wieshop, some say Weishop, who was a Jesuit priest uh, under the order of the Rothschild family. All right, this guy, Adam Wieshop, worked in tandem with the Rothschild family. He's one of the top priests, all right? And um, he also was from Germany, just like the Rothschild family was from Germany. He uh, put together uh, something called the New World Order, all right? Complete with the uh, seal of the New World Order, which is the pyramid, all right? The, what you see at the back of the one dollar bill, the pyramid with the all C and I, uh, and the Latin words, anuit coeptes, which means he favors our enterprise with success. And what is their enterprise? Novos auto seclorium. I mean, it's on the back of the dollar bill. You can go and see it for yourself. The, the Latin words, novos auto seclorium, means new world order. Now, what's a staple or one of the staples of the New World Order? Everyone is to be identified through a microchip, okay? And that indeed lines up with the prophecy in Revelation 13 and 16, where it says, He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. That is the mark of the New World Order. That's what it is. It's the mark of the new world order. It's what Esau wants to bring. It's Esau's enterprise. And even the Bible speaks about Esau's enterprise. If we go in the book of Job, I think it's 5 and 12. Esau has an agenda, man. Job 5 and 12, let's read it. It says, he, the he is the heavenly father, Yahweh, and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. He disappointeth the devices of the crafty. Who is the crafty? Esau. You know, in the book of Genesis, it speaks about how the serpent, which later became known as the Edomites, Esau, how they were more subtle than any beast in the field. Any beast in the field is a metaphor for the other nations. Okay, and that's Esau. Esau is the most subtile of every nation. You know, <clears throat> every nation, Esau is the most subtile. There's even a scripture where it says, the children of this world, which are the Edomites, are wiser than the children of light. Who's the children of light? The Israelites. So to a certain extent, Esau is even more subtile than the Israelites. But when it comes to the elect of the Israelites, we are not ignorant as it is written. 
we are not ignorant of his devices. That's 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. So we understand what Esau wants to bring. We understand about Esau's new world order. And we understand what the mark is of his new world order. You know, the Bible speaks about the, the mark, the image, and the beast. It speaks about the beast, his mark, and his image. Now, we know what that means. We know the beast represents the Roman Empire, all right, which the image is the New World Order, which is patterned after the Roman Empire, and the mark is its CHIP, its chip, which they want everyone identified by that chip. It's very easy. Now, you got certain Israelites that are just, uh, I don't know, they uh, either they're incredibly stupid or they've taken the bag, they've sold out, okay, whether it be the teachers or the students. If the teachers or the students can't see this thing, then like I said, either they're incredibly stupid or they've taken the bag. And when I say incredibly stupid, me and the Heavenly Father have blinded them to these facts, all right, making them stupid, okay? I mean, it's very easy to see, all right, and even more so, the fact that the Heavenly Father, pursuant to Psalms, the 64th chapter, the Heavenly Father have said he's, he's even going to make the people on the inside their own tongue to fall upon themselves. What does that mean? To reveal the people on the inside, whistleblowers, if you will. All right, that's, that's like a technical term for it, a whistleblower. That's a guy on the inside telling you what they're about to do, what, they, what their plans are and what they're about to do. And that's... That's the spirit of the Heavenly Father uh, um, re, um, resting on that person. Also to fill, fulfill prophecy, I, uh, the book of Psalm, the 64th chapter, which I will read. But let's go back to Job 5 and 12 again. He, di he disappointed the devices of the crafty. So eventually, this new world order will be disappointed. And, and how is that going to be? Well, Yahweh is going to disappoint the new world order of Esau. When you go in the book of 1 Corinthians 15 and 23, it says, Yahweh shall will put down all rule, all authority, and power. This is when he comes back with that mighty army, army of angels, led by Michael, the archangel. And that's pursuant to Daniel, the 12th chapter. Yahweh Shah is not coming alone. He's coming with an army of angels. One of those angels being Michael, the archangel, which is the angel, the archangel of war. So Yahweh Shai is coming for war, war against Esau, Isaiah 63 and 1. Now, I don't have to tell you that Esau is going to lose. Esau is still going to fight. Is the Heavenly Father going to put the spirit on Esau to fight? The scriptures tell us that. But Esau is going to lose. He's going to lose to Yahweh Shai. Now, after Esau loses to Yahweh Shai, beginning with their top banking families, they're going to lose their power. In just one hour, they're going to lose their power, and they're going to be reduced from having everything in the world and ruling the world in wickedness to having nothing, to being slaves underneath the Israelites, beginning with Yahweh Shai and the rest of the elect. And that's pursuing the Psalm, the 149th chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. So that's their future. So this, this is an example of how he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Now, again, on the back of the dollar bill, you see their enterprise. You see the pyramid, you see the all C and I, and you see the Latin words, Anuit Coeptes, Novos Auto Seclorium. Anuit Coeptes means he favors our enterprise with success. So, indeed, this man has an enterprise, and part of the enterprise is to have everyone electronically tagged. And we've been talking about this to the point of ad nauseum. Begin to follow the pastor. We've been bringing this information out over and over and over again until they make this thing mandatory. Now, before I go, I'm not going to make this video too long at all. Okay, this this is one of those videos where it's it's straightforward and to the point. Now, I have here those of you, some of you have seen this video. Well, the majority of you have seen this video. Some of you have not. This video was put up by Carlos Sando, and uh, the name of this video is Aaron Russo revealing the mark of the beast. This man here, before he passed away, was a, a, one of the top Hollywood movie producer. He produced the movie Trading Places. 
uh, starring uh, Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. A very funny movie indeed. And um, he also produced the movie called The Rose by uh, Bette Midler. All right, Bette, the singer Bette Midler, actress and slash singer Bette Midler. So he, he was a top Hollywood producer, and he was invited by one of the, the top banking families, uh, in this case, the Rockefeller, a member of the Rockefeller family, uh, Nick Rockefeller. He was invited to join a, one of those secret societies, I'm not sure which one, and to my understanding, he turned, he turned Nick Rockefeller down, all right? So there was this conversation that ensued with Aaron Russo and Nick Rockefeller. And Nick Rockefeller told Aaron Russo a lot of things. Now, these are two major players in the game, man. These are two insiders. Nick Rockefeller was an insider, and Aaron Russo, to a certain ex extent, was an insider. That's why Nick Rockefeller wanted him to join their secret society. Like I said, I'm not sure exactly which secret society. It might have been the CFR. I'm not sure which one it was, but... You know, he wanted uh, Aaron, Aaron uh, Nick, Rec Nick Rockefeller took a liking to Aaron Russo, okay? So without further ado, what I'm going to do is play some of this video here. This, you know, this is uh, Aaron Russo being interviewed by Alex Jones. And he talks about, Aaron Russo talks about Nick Rockefeller, his friend, and what Nick Rockefeller told him. And one of the things you're going to hear is Nick Rockefeller told him that they want everyone chipped. And that falls right in line with Revelation 13 and 16. So at this point, any Israelite teacher or student that can't get it, that try to gainsay it, because you know the Lord said that his people, the Israelites, are disobedient and gainsaying people. That's what the Lord said about his people. That's how we know that these, these uh, Jakes out here are Israelites, because... They have that trait. They're very disobedient and gainsaying people, especially when the facts are right in their face. So at this point, if anyone uh, wants to believe otherwise concerning the MOTB, well, our attitude is let them be ignorant. Let me bring out a scripture before I go into it. The Apostle Paul said, um, if any man be ignorant, all right, I believe that's uh, 1 Corinthians First Corinthians 14, the 14th chapter. Yeah, 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, the 38th verse, I believe it is. Yep, it is right here. 1 Corinthians 14 and 38. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. So we're not going to bend over backwards like we used to in the past, trying to get you to understand uh, this MOTB and its place in, in Bible prophecy. If you don't want to see that Revelation 13, 16 is talking about the MOTB as in the electronic chip, then just be ignorant. Okay, just be ignorant. All right, and you're going to die in your ignorance. It's as simple as that. You're going to, you're going to be the one to take that mark. You're going to be the one to take that mark. And you're going to die, uh, pursuant to Revelation 14 and 9, if you take that mark, that chip, you're going to die taking that mark, taking that chip. All right? It's as simple as that. And like I said, we're not going to bend over backwards trying to, trying to um, have you ex uh, accept the truth. Okay? Even though all the information comes out, you still have Israelites that are disobedient and gainsaying. Even though we go into the Greek word there. You got, you got Israelites disobeying, uh, um, gainsaying that, a disobedient and gainsaying people, right? You got Israelites gainsaying uh, the, the Greek word, teragma, saying it's not what the definition is, you know, the definition is of the word, the definition we brought out, which is a, a thing inserted. You got Israelites saying, no, that's not what it means. All of a sudden, they're experts, you know? And meanwhile, when you look at the word chiragma and you look at the, the uh, root word chirax, the, the chirax or karax is a, a, a syringe. It, it clearly says in the Blue Letter Bible, it's a syringe used to administer the mark, which is the chiragma. I mean, it, it, it falls hand in hand, but you still got Israelites 
gain saying that. So what are you going to do with an individual like that? That individual, you just got to let him be ignorant, like the scripture I read here. 1 Corinthians 14 and 38. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. You just got to let him be ignorant. Okay? It's just that simple. So all these facts, man, with the New World Order, their mark and their image and all that, if you want to disobey, disobey and gainsay those facts, that's on you. Okay, but anyway, let me play some of this video here. My friendship with Nick Rockefeller was one where we were, uh, expressed ideas to each other. So here's a man on the inside telling you what the top banking families want. All right. And the Rockefellers, they're right underneath the Rothschild family. As a matter of fact, some of the Rockefellers are actually Rothschilds. And I remember I found some information where uh, the Rothschilds, when they came over to America, they changed their name to Rockefeller just to hide the fact that they're Rothschilds. This is what these top banking families do. All right. So let's move on and thoughts and philosophies and he wanted me to become part of what they were doing and for me to become a member did you hear that he wanted me to become part of what they were doing now the building they're showing you here and we've passed through this building many times back in the past uh pastor Tar and myself that's the cfr building located in uh on park avenue in new york in new york uh, city all right in new york city the CFR building. Now, all you have to do is Google the CFR Council on Foreign Relations and find out what they're about. They're like a semi-secret society. If you watch the video, um, The Capitalist Conspiracy by G. G. Edward Griffin, he goes into the CFR. He breaks down, the, and this video was made back in 1970, 1969, 1970. The video by uh, G. Edward Griffin, The Capitalist Conspiracy, he talks about the CFR. All right, now the CFR has major control over, over the uh, universities, the uh, uh, TV networks. A lot of these TV networks, a lot of these TV um, network, these TV network uh, anchors and uh, personnel employees, if you will, a lot of them are members of the CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, which is a secret society. All right, remember, the scripture even speaks about Esau and his secret societies. If we go in the book of Micah, all right, what's that? Micah, the uh, second chapter, Micah 2 and 2. Well, let me start the first verse. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And, and that's what the wicked elite, that's what they do. They, they work their magic, they work their wickedness through these secret societies. Okay? Um, bear with me for a minute. Uh, I think that's Isaiah, the 10th chapter. Isaiah, the... This is a good scripture right here. I mean, it's not the one I actually want, but it pretty much says the same thing about how Esau does his wickedness and secrecy. Psalm 64 and 4, it says that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Who's the perfect? Us Israelites. We were created to be perfect. All right. Esau shoots at us in secret. He does his works in secret, hence the reason why he has secret societies, and that's where they do their wickedness. 
that they may shoot in secret at the perfect, suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. And right, and right now, the main thing they're, they're shooting is the inevitability of everyone being forced to take that MOTB, that electronic tag. And you're about to hear Aaron Russo say it to Alex Jones in, in the interview. Okay, as we read on, it says, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. See, they commune of laying snares privately. In other words, they do it in secret. They say, who shall see them? Because they do it through their secret societies. You see? Then it goes on to say, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep, deep in wickedness. All right, so what does it mean they accomplish a diligent search? Well, they do something called trial and error. Okay, they'll actually do a test run on the people. All right, like case in point, let me give you an example. The C boogie, uh, the C-O-V-I-D, all right, that was a trial run, all right, to get people to be uh, comfortable with being... Uh, electronically tagged by receiving a needle where electronic devices is inserted into them. Okay? There's something called gradualism where the wicked elite get people to be comfortable with their plans. All right? Comfortable with the wicked elite's plans by gradually uh, bringing, bringing um, their plans upon them. Gradually. Okay? It's called gradualism. Can look that term up so that's it right there they search out iniquities they accomplish a diligent search both the inward thought of, of every one of them and the heart is deep so that's esau out here working his wickedness remember it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against the rulers of darkness all right who work in secret okay let's get back to the video the CFR and uh, offered various business opportunities for me to get involved in and for me to um, not take up the fight or the battle that I've been taking up in the past, you know, to drop that idea because what was the point of my fighting for the people, right? So uh, I had a friend, Nick Rockefeller, okay, who was one of the Rockefeller family. And Did you hear what you said? What's the, what's the point of you fighting for the people? So that shows you the top wicked elite they don't give a shit about the people they see that they, they see the people as their food that's why they have a term called um the goyim the the term goyim means cattle okay they see the people as the cattle or as cattle all right to be electronically tagged to be earmarked just like they have their the, the farmers have their cattle earmarked Branded, if you will. And he, uh, uh, when I was running for governor in Nevada, he came to me, introduced himself to me through an attorney, and uh, we became friends. We started talking about things, and um, I learned an awful lot from Mr. Rockefeller. And one of the things that we used to talk about was the ultimate plan of the banking industry, what they wanted to accomplish. The ultimate plan of the banking industry. And and the banking industry, they're, they're the ones with the power. Not the president or the vice president. The banking industry is the ones with the power. The top banking families. The Bible calls them the kings. The kings of this planet Earth. The, Roth, the, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, Gettys. You know, these ultra-rich banking families that own they don't just own corporations they own countries which they've turned into a corporation all right and america is no different america's own lock stock and barrel all right the president really has no power the president is a stooge office all right and all you have to do is some simple research and you can find those to be facts anyway let's move on and the goals of the uh, banking industry, and not, and not just the Federal Reserve System, but the private banks in Germany and England, all over Italy. And the bankers, let's not forget, the bankers deal with gold. 
gold and silver. Okay, there's the old saying, the golden rule. What is the golden rule? He who has the gold rules. And that's what the Rothschilds and Rockefellers deal with. They deal with gold and silver. All right? Years ago, Mayam Shilbawa said, permit me to rule over a nation's credit, and I care not who makes the laws. And indeed, the, Roth the Rothschilds do rule over a nation's credit. Okay? When you control the goal, you control, you control the country. You control the uh, legislation. Okay? You, you what is called above the law. All right? They're all over the world. They all work together. They they're all, all central banks. They all work together. And they're, and they're all part of the Communist Manifesto. You know, central banking is one of the major planks of the Communist Manifesto. We talk about America being a capitalist country, but yet at the same time we have a central bank that plans everything for us, right? Exactly. The central bank is also known as the Federal Reserve. And that's a very interesting story, the Federal Reserve, how it came about. It was really a joke on the American people. The very term Federal Reserve is a joke. All right, because because there's no really there's no reserves, and it's it's certainly not federal. It's a private organization controlled by the international banking families. But the people, the 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 American people, are not supposed to know that. They're supposed to believe that the Federal Reserve is a is a government institution that benefits the people. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, let's move on. And the graduated income tax is another plank of the Communist Manifesto, right? So right there you have two major planks of the Communist Manifesto that have been brought in because of the Federal Reserve System, okay? So uh, the ultimate goal that these people have... By the way, speaking of secrecy, that's how the Federal Reserve came about. came about by secrecy. And I just read to you a couple of scriptures dealing with Esau and his secrecy and wickedness. The Federal Reserve was created by secrecy. The members who were responsible for it, they had to meet in secrecy on Jekyll Island back in 1910. And they were warned not to tell the people what they were doing. The reporters of the day, when they asked them, I, f I forgot which, I think it was uh, Andrews, uh, Pyatt Andrews, he was one of the members that, that uh, that was there when they put the they put the Federal Reserve, what would later become known as the Federal Reserve System together. A. Pyatt Andrews, I believe his name was, he was there, and I I think it was him who was asked what are they doing, and I believe he said they were going on a on a, a duck hunting trip. One of the individuals was told to carry a. a a shotgun say that they were going hunting yeah they were hunting all right hunting <laughs> hunting for the for the uh the freedom of the people by controlling them through the money remember it's all about control okay so i believe it took nine days they sat at the table certain members uh this guy was there uh What's his name? Oh, Wahlberg, Paul Wahlberg. He was supposed to be the brightest mind out of all the members. He's the one who later came up with the term Federal Reserve. Paul Wahlberg. Okay. So they put that group together. They put that thing together. Basically to, to uh, hoodwink the so-called American people. And, and by 1913, it was made law. The Federal Reserve became law. It started out as an act, the Federal Reserve Act. Then by 1913, December 22nd, 1913, it became law. And we have it to this very day. And the Federal Reserve is responsible for all the, the misery and turmoil that is in this place called America. Okay, if, if you know the history of it and exactly what it does. Okay. Let's move on. 
mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers, where, and, and they're doing it in sections. The, the European currency, the euro, and, and the European constitution is one part of it. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, right? And they want to create a new currency called the Amero, right? And uh, the whole, the, the whole agenda... Which already, that objective has already been reached. But he's going to tell you the ultimate objective. The, is to create a one world government where everybody has an, R, R, an RFID chip implanted in them. All money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is getting me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And all money will be in your chips. And so, any, so not, instead of having cash, anytime you have money in your, in your, in your chip, they can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say you owe us this much money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally. Total control. Total control. And if you're like me or you... There you go. Total control. That's what it's all about. That's what Esau wants. Remember, Esau has a God complex. Okay, Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, he wants total control because he feels that he is God. And they can get total control through this RFID chip, through this uh, electronic device. And you're protesting what they're doing. They can just turn off your chip. And you have nothing. You can't buy food. You can't do anything. It's total control of the people. So you cannot buy or sell, save he that had the mark. This lines up right with what Aaron Russo is saying. Now again, if you have these Israelites who, who wish to remain stupid, then let them be stupid. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. But these are the facts. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do. What everything, you everything is in there, you know. And so they, they want a one world government controlled by them. Everybody being chipped. All your money in those chips. And they control the chips and they control people. And you become a slave. Uh, I met Rockefeller through. There you go. You become a slave. A slave to the new world order. Anyway, hopefully you were edified on to the next one.